This is you. You're a newly starting intern in the month of July, and you're presenting your patient in front of your attending and the rest of the team. And you notice that your patient has been having persistently low potassium despite you repleting it twice. So you try to act smart and ask to check magnesium because you know that hypomagnesemia can lead to hypokalemia. But your attending outsmart you and counter your comment by asking you, do you know the mechanism of that? So that's when your brain goes numb and you can call that mental freeze. So let me explain to you the mechanism of why low magnesium can lead to low potassium. But before we get into that, we should know that there are three common conditions that can lead to both hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia along with other electrolyte def deficiencies. And that's by either increasing the excretions of these ions or decreasing the absorption of these ions. And those three com conditions are chronic alcoholism, diarrhea, or the use of diuretics. But even in the absence of those conditions, there is still a mechanism that explains why hypomagnesemia can lead to hypokalemia. Let me take you a step or two back to your Med 1, where you learned about the structure of a nephron. Paying more close attention to the most distal part, which is the collecting duct. And you also know from Med 1 that potassium level is heavily concentrated inside the cell thanks to the sodium potassium ATPase pump. And that creates a heavy electrical gradient favoring the efflux of those potassium ions outside the cells into the urine. But what regulates those potassium ions are channels called ROMK channels. And you can think about ROMK channels as a gate. And the gatekeeper for those gates is the magnesium ions. So in the normal physiological state where you have enough magnesium ions, those magnesium ions will block those channels and will prevent the efflux of potassium into the urine. However, if you have a low magnesium state, such as in our patient, some of you will have less magnesium ions to bind to those channels. So some of these channels will actually remain open and will lead to a continuous efflux of potassium extracellularly into the urine, thanks to the heavy electrical gradient. So no matter how much you replete your potassium, your potassium will continuously be exited out, into, out of your body into the urine. Until you check the magnesium level and you replete the magnesium and block these channels again and that's when you start noticing that your potassium level will start improving. So the next time you notice that your potassium level is persistently low, check the magnesium and replete that and that will resolve your problem. And now you know why.